Hey, what's going on everyone? The patch notes for the upcoming space update are finally here and they look really, really great. So let's check them out. First of all, there's this page right here where they give a brief overview of what will be in the update. Uh, and they say new minifigures and events, space minifigures reworked, all new booster pass, Brickspedition improvements, PvP payout changes, and the level and gear cap will be increased. So let's start with events. First of all, a brand new brick pace event focused around the current two Blacktron figures will come this update. There's going to be three chapters, and you'll also be able to unlock the Alpha Centauri outpost from this brick pace. So basically, it's just a Blacktron focused brick pace, which sounds pretty awesome. Also, Clockwork is finally going to be released uh, from an unboxed event. And they say that the event calendar is going to be coming soon, where we'll get info about events and time quests, as well as dailies they mention here. So that makes me think that possibly the the daily reward character, who's currently Redbeard, might change month to month, uh, specifically because they mentioned that here. I don't know, that's just speculation. Okay, so for the new minifigures, of course, we're getting Quincy and Clockwork, uh, and then the other ones are Gens and the Alpha Centauri Outpost, as we just mentioned a second ago. Now, one thing that's really great with this update is the previous Unbox figures are getting added to the stores. So, uh, Spooky Girl is going to be in the Guild store, Scarlet will be in the Arena store, Hank in the Brick store, York will be in the Gem Shop for now. Eventually, he will probably move to a regular store as well. And then Zombie will be on Monolith Waste 4.2, uh, and the Lego House tiles will be in the Guild store as well. So that all sounds really great right there. Personally, I was hoping that Hank would be in the Arena Shop, uh, since I already have pretty much everyone else maxed in that shop, uh, but that's fine. I mean, I already have Scarlet uh, Max, so I can't complain too much. And then, of course, Poppy is getting reworked, as well as most of the Space Faction, uh, but I already covered that in some previous videos. Uh, then we get to some really interesting stuff. So with the booster pass right here, they say that they have taken our feedback on the more expensive and larger packs being featured to new players, and they're now introducing a new way to boost your progression on a daily basis for a much smaller cost. This pass will last 14 days, amplifies the rewards gotten from your daily quests, and give you access to a daily premium pack. Now, that's not going to be like a, a pack that'll cost money. That's just like a uh, basically another bag, a daily premium bag that you'll be able to open and get some more rewards from that as well. So that actually sounds pretty interesting. Uh, typically, these types of things are pretty cheap. So if it is, that could actually be a really good deal to get better rewards every day and just overall improve and speed up your progress quite substantially. Then we're going to be getting goal reminders, uh, which looks like this pop up here in the bottom right hand corner of this screenshot here. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It kind of seems like it's in the way, uh, but maybe it's not there permanently on the screen. Hopefully not, because that would be uh, that that would get annoying pretty quickly. Uh, and then in the screenshot, you can also see the purple name and a purple outline around the quests icon. And that right there indicates that this player has purchased the booster pack. Uh, then we have some other very important changes and improvements. First of all, there's going to be some changes to Arena. Uh, they say that the PvP Arena is getting a change that has been highly anticipated and a huge help to our players all over the world. The payout of Arena, which previously was fixed at one time, now will be paid in your local time. Uh, that is long overdue, so glad to see that finally come to the game. And then they also said that uh, we have added new rewards that you get for winning arena fights. Uh, this is a new test in making the arena more engaging, and we will continue to monitor feedback. That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Players might intentionally weaken their team to fall further to get some more of these rewards each day. Uh, but I don't know, we will have to see how that works. And then, of course, the level cap and gear is going to be going up to level 60 and gear 7, so I am totally looking forward to that. And also with Brickspedition, they said that there have also been some adjustments to the way that difficulty is generated, uh, which should lead to the nodes being less challenging. Quite glad to see that. That should hopefully make Brickspedition more playable and not uh, all those super slow fights that we sometimes see 
on day six and seven. Then there are some bug fixes. The one that I'm most excited for is this one right here that says, an applied filter to your minifigure collection will stay applied when returning from looking at a specific minifigure details. So even though that's not the most dramatic change, that's probably the one I'm looking most forward to. Okay, so those are the patch notes right there. Now let's take a look at the new characters that are being added to the game, as well as the new Black Tron set. So starting with Quincy right here, they said that with Quincy, they wanted to create a hero that focused on managing buffs and debuffs mixed with a little bit of healing. Quincy works well against teams focused on buffing themselves up, and he has the potential to reduce the effectiveness of healing on single targets. Pairing him up with Blacktron Dwayne will make Dwayne a more effective hero in battle. That's what I like to see. Okay, so with his basic, it's going to deal 110% damage, and then if he had skill up, he will clear a random debuff from himself and another random hero. Okay, so a bit of debuff cleansing right there on his basic. That'll be very nice up against pirates. With his first special, it'll deal 100% damage to the target foe and reduce their pet by 5% for each buff they had, up to a maximum of 5 buffs or 25% pep reduction. And if the target foe had prepared, remove it and inflict disarmed for 2 turns. And if the target foe had no buffs at the start of this attack, inflict buff immunity for 2 turns instead. This is great to see, I'm glad buff immunity is becoming more common because it is such a useful debuff. With his second special, it will deal 120% damage to the target foe, and then for each buff on the target, Quincy heals all heroes for 5% of their max health, up to a maximum of 7 buffs, or a 35% heal. Space allies with 80% or more health will then gain max health up 2 for 3 turns, and if Quincy had skill up, inflict heal block 2 on the target foe for 2 turns. Yet again, I'm quite glad to see Heal Block come to the game. Although this does say Heal Block 2 here, so maybe Heal Block 1 will only heal will only block for a percentage of the heal, and Heal Block 2 might block the whole thing. Or perhaps this one's 50% and Heal Block 1 is 25%. Not sure there, uh, but either way, that's still going to be helpful. And then with his passive ability, this is where the skill up comes into play. For each debuff Quincy has, he gains 10% grit. And then at the start of his turn, he has a 50% chance to gain skill up to for 2 turns, plus 10% bonus chance for each buff on him. And at the start of his turn, if he had 0 debuffs, that chance is 100%. So he's going to be getting the skill up very often at the end of his turn, and it's for 2 turns, so even if he doesn't get it the next turn, he'll still have it for one more turn, meaning that he will clear the debuffs with his basic and inflict the heal block 2 more often. I believe Clockwork's kit has remained exactly the same as it has been in the game for 8 plus months or however long it has been. So let's move on to the outpost right here. They said that with this set, they wanted to focus on bringing Blacktron's new signature style of punishing foes with buffs to the whole team. Successfully doing so will grant offensive boost to your heroes and help blast away the competition. So starting with the first ability, at the start of each hero's turn, if the total number of buffs on the foe team is 10 or more, that hero has a 35% chance to gain attack up 1 for 1 turn. And then Blacktron heroes have a 70% chance to gain attack up 2 for 1 turn instead. And that 10 or more buffs will happen pretty often up against Ninjago teams. With the second ability here, whenever a space hero deals damage to a foe for each buff on the target, that hero has a 5% chance to inflict defense down 1 for 2 turns, and if the hero is Blacktron, for each buff on the target foe, that hero has a 10% chance to inflict defense down 2 instead. The third ability is, after an attack, if a foe's health is below 30%, there is a 50% chance to inflict 1 stack of damage over time for 2 turns. And then finally, the fourth ability, whenever a space hero defeats a foe, copy 5 buffs from that foe to that hero. Hopefully that doesn't include taunt. Each hero then has a 35% chance to gain critical chance of 1 for 2 turns, and if a Blacktron hero defeats a foe, heroes have a 35% chance to gain critical chance of 2 for 2 turns instead. So, pretty solid kit right there, definitely one of the better space sets we have, and I'm curious to see how all of these Blacktron characters are going to work together to hopefully make Dwayne do quite a bit of damage. And then finally, we have Jens here. With this character, they said they wanted to create a space hero that could act as a core member of any space team configuration, and with some solid plug-and-play potential too. 
Jens boosts the survivability of his space allies with his special abilities as the potential to stop foes from reassembling and stop foes' passives from triggering too. And also, Jens will not be immediately accessible with this update. He is going to be the Raid Reward character. And I'm really glad to see that the Raid Reward character is going to be very, very powerful and also useful as a plug-and-play unit. And yes, we are finally getting an ability that if it defeats an enemy, they cannot be reassembled. That has been much needed for quite some time, and it's also a pretty big hitting ability, as we'll see in a second here. His basic will deal 100% damage to the target foe, and have an 80% chance to inflict skill down 2 for 2 turns. And then if the foe had 65% or less health, or if they're an attacker, they're inflicted with speed down 2 or two turns. All right, I like to see speed down two on a basic, especially for two turns. His first special will deal 115% damage to the target foe and inflict bricked for two turns. And then there will be a 75% chance to inflict hero passive block for two turns, plus 5% bonus chance for each techie hero. And at the start of the attack, if the foe's total number of buffs and debuffs is six or more, each other space hero has a 70% chance of their ability cooldowns reduced by 1. That's very useful right there. Then we go to probably his second best ability just after his ultimate. This attack right here will deal 125% damage plus 15% bonus damage for each foe that had stealth and reduce their pep by 50%. All other foes with stealth then have a 60% chance to gain 2-3 to three stacks of damage over time for 2 turns, and if this ability defeats the target foe, the foe cannot be reassembled. So this is going to be probably most useful up against Lloyd when he is paired with Aurora, because he's going to use his stealth ability, put everyone under stealth, then you can use this ability against him, do 185% damage, kill him and then he cannot be reassembled by Aurora which would make the team completely fall apart. So this is going to be incredibly useful and I'm glad to finally see a cannot be reassembled ability. Then with his passive it says at the start of the battle each space and techie hero gains 25% max health and 25% defense. For each classic space hero all heroes gain 5% speed. Okay even just that right there is insane a 25% health increase. That is very substantial for each space and techie hero. Now, typically when it lists two tags, it counts as double. So, Jens might be giving himself a 50% health and defense increase. Not sure about that, but that is kind of what it sounds like. And then for each classic space hero, all heroes will gain 5% speed. So, if Jens had reader in the team, that's a 10% speed boost. So, really nice increasing to stats right there. But that's not it for this passive. It also says, at the end of his turn, Jens has a 60% chance to clear debuff from himself, plus 5% bonus chance for each techie hero. If Jens has no debuffs at the start of his turn, he has a 50% chance to clear one debuff from another random space hero. If that hero had no debuffs, they gain debuff immunity for one turn instead. That's very useful right there. Again, that's going to be super helpful up against Redbeard to just help keep all of those debuffs off of your team as much as possible. And then with his ultimate right here, this is probably his best ability. Also, I love the name here, Control Assault Delete. That is very clever. So this will inflict all foes randomly with either Vulnerable or Debilitate and then deal 150% damage to random foes four times. These attacks ignore stealth and taunt. So vulnerable is a guaranteed critical hit, and debilitate is lose 100% pep. So these debuffs will be applied, then the damage will be dealt, and then the debuffs will get triggered right after that. And then on top of that, each foe inflicted with bricked, disarmed, or hero passive block has a 75% chance to increase its duration by 1. So Jens is looking really really good, Quincy 2 and the Blacktron set looks pretty solid as well. I am really excited for this update, it looks really good all around, and the new characters look very, very powerful. So that's going to be it for this one, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.